Good morning guys, welcome to the weekend, hope you're all well. So tasks for the day, I've been shopping this week. Um, firstly the hot liquor tank only has the one hole in the front um, and I was concerned about what the thread of that was. So, um, so I bought a one inch ball valve um, with a one inch male each end. Um, so at least then it makes it into a standard that I can just go to screw fix or wherever and buy bits for. Um, um, I like tri-clamps. We've got this, which is a bulkhead tri-clamp. Um, that fits on the outside of the tank, the rubber seal against the surface of the outside of the tank. And then on the inside, a uh, big old lock nut to tighten things up. And if you're not familiar with these, I guess a lot of you will be, um, uh, there's a recess here and an interface seal will fit there and then you can connect whatever object item you want to connect to it in my case a heating element uh, it could be a pipe fitting it could be a, a cap uh, just to blank it off making the hole for it is another thing my drills started to oscillate I think I mean it's very old anyway I don't even know where I got it um, but the, uh, the bearings, I think, have gone in it, so it's drilling ovals, not circles. Um, so as long as I can get a 10 mil hole through, um, we can use one of these Q-Max cutters. Um, so that works by drilling a pilot hole, which this um, bolt will go through. And then on the other side of the vessel, uh, you fit this, this cup. And as you tighten, um, these very sharp teeth bite through, and it makes a really neat cut. Um, they're about 20 quid each, these. You get them in all sizes. This is a 40 millimeter, um, obviously, because that's what I need for the tri-clamp bulkhead. Um, I've started to think about the steam condenser. Uh, I mentioned in a previous video the four inch exhaust pipe, effectively, that we can get into a, a, a U-bend over the top of the vessel, but I need some way to jet in cold water to provide that condensation to, uh, to draw the draw the steam out and down. So uh, I've got these little um, quarter inch, uh, they're, effect they're basically like pressure washer nozzles. Um, these are quite small, but I think it's gonna be decent enough in that four inch pipe. That's that. What else have we bought? We have bought a Digi10 uh, water meter or water flow controller. Into that you can enter, you can just let it run and see the numbers across the front which you can reset so you can tell how much water has, has flowed through or you can set a target. So let's say I want 450 litres, I can enter 450, press go and it will open a solenoid or a motorised ball valve to let the water flow into the, into the tank. So it comes with one of these which I might use, I might not. Um, it's one inch BSP again, so um, I can try it and see how we get on. But this solenoid there, the, the box that I just showed will signal this with 12 volts to actuate this coil, energize this coil, which will either allow water to flow or stop the water flowing. I think it's normally closed, so if the power fails, it will shut the water off, <laughs> but I'm not sure. So I'm gonna have to double check that. Inside it, in fact, stuck inside it now, is a, a water, uh, oh yeah, I won't get that will I? Oh, there we go, yeah. A little water f filter as well, just to capture any bits that um, may have got into the HLT. So that's where we are for the morning. Um, it is now 11.04 and uh, I better get down there, get started. I'm filming in here today because it's absolutely battering down with hail and uh, I tried to do it in the kitchen. I couldn't even hear myself think, so I've no idea how noisy it's gonna be on, under the tin roof. So I'll do my best to get some more video anyway, um, but if not, uh, maybe I'll pick up tomorrow. We'll see you in a minute. Here we are. You know what I've lost? I've lost that, that gimbal that I bought. I don't know where the hell it is. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's in one of these boxes. Um, I've looked everywhere at home. The only other place it could be is I went to the beer emporium in Sandbach a few weeks ago. And uh, I was planning to film a few people talking about talking about the logo um, when we were trying to make the decision and um, I took it there but I don't remember using it and I don't remember bringing it back so uh, if anyone's seen a DJI gimbal floating around the streets of Sandbach let me know but it's gone so I wasn't sure what size that hole was and I didn't have any real way of checking it properly but 
This was the uh, this was the original. This thread, however, is a bit wacky. Um, so we've bought this one, which oh, I thought it was male to male, it's male to female. Okay, I lied before. Either way, one inch BSP both sides, stainless steel. This one's uh, plated brass. Not that it matters so much for the HLT, but you know it's consistent at least with the rest of the uh, fittings that we're using. So. We'll drill a hole in the back, or maybe the side of that, for the heating element. And use that Q-Max cutter to, uh, to punch it out to 40. Uh, for the kettle, this is the 4-inch uh, steam chimney, effectively. I mean, the idea is normally that would go up in a vent stack and out of the building, but um, we really want to try and be as considerate as we can to the residential neighbours that we have, so we'll keep all the lovely malt smell inside the building wherever possible um, so that's not so high so I'm just gonna put together those uh, plastic pipes and hopefully if I've got all the right fittings we can plumb that in and uh, see if we can get it to spray so I'm just gonna do this by eye because um, we got stacks of pipe we can fiddle around with the exact positions later but that'll be the one that goes on the top and then we'll curve that round and down and tee the side ones off it so um, I'm just going to do a quick approximate measure up at the other end only got to be rough and then we'll cut the pipe and uh, see what we can do Okay, so we're all assembled. I've just left, realized I've left one piece at home, so uh, Elliot's gonna pop down with it, but effectively we've got a jet at the top, um, which will be on the curve of the pipe down towards the waist. And then number one, number two, number three. They're probably a bit far apart at the moment. I don't think we're gonna need them quite so spaced. And uh, obviously the water supply will go on that end. Um, but as soon as Elliot arrives with the with the coupler for there, we can connect it to the 15 millimeter pipe over there and uh, see how it squirts. The weather today is just horrible. Two and a half degrees, sleet, snow. Um, yeah, just spotted this as well. Nice one. Wherever this was, thank you. You shouldn't have a dog. I'm assuming it was a dog and not some late night reveller on his way home from the pub over there. Anyway. Um, yeah cold wet and the noise inside the unit means i might have to voice over some of these clips later we'll see how see how well the sound picks up i'll give you an example so if my voice changes it's because i've recorded it later when i'm when i'm uh, editing
okay one hole and uh I won't rub my finger around it too much, but they're usually super neat. There's no, I mean, there's no burrs or anything. Uh, so we just got to check now that the uh, tri clamp will fit properly. So we're going to send Elliot back into the tube. So we've got it in, it's just hand tight at the moment. Um, we'll get inside and crank it up in a minute, but I just want to show you how it works really, because I've got the other bits now. So interface seal, sits on the top in that little rib there, with this clamp ready to, uh, ready to receive. The heating element we've got here is 5,500 watts, uh, 230 volt single phase. So um, that will go through the hole, like one of those fairground games uh, into there and then sits on that seal and then this clamp the, I think they'll like handcuffs anyway because on the end let's do it the other way up um, goes on the end clamps around and um, loosen her off a bit make sure that's in tightens up there you go and uh, obviously once it's tight inside um, it should be watertight. Um, I'll just show you inside to show you how it looks in there. So it looks like such a small heating element, but actually that should be good enough. Worst case, you saw how easy it was. I can whack a hole in the other side, put another one in. Um, we've got sufficient power in this sort of corner of the building for uh, a little bit more than, than what we've got. Another kilowatt or two. Okay, we'll tighten her up. And there she is, in situ. I did it on the side because this, you know, I was planning on doing it right at the back, opposite the, opposite the tap. But there's a seam where the seal, where the steel's welded, so um, makes no difference whether it's on the side or the back. Plus, actually, it's easy there for access to the, uh, to the cables. Um, need to think about mounting this. Um, although, I might wait and put this into uh, an enclosure with the relay. Uh, so it's in one sort of ABS box. We'll see. Right, so we'll give this little jet thing a test. Um, I wondered why I'd put this little T piece in, but I'm glad I did because we've got a little uh, useful test point there. Uh, so we're 15 mil speed fit into 15 mil um, John Guest coupler, three eighths on the output through basically what's B B line I'm using for now. Um, little isolator so we can knock it off and on and then if you follow the pipe down if you follow the pipe down you'll see we've got these um, assembled jets ready to go so I'll just stick the water on and we'll show you what we've got So on the Sunday last week, I didn't really record anything, but I'll just show you where we uh, where we finished. We got the armoured cable in, um, successfully terminated into this consumer unit. Now it's still not tested. Uh, our guy's going to come and do that. But what we've got is a 32 amp. It's actually a single socket ring at the moment. Um, I plan to put some more sockets on it shortly. But 32 amp for the sockets, then 16, one, two, three, four, which are to these for switch fuse spurs and then the cable outlets there will have 2.5 square mil cable uh, going over to the four heating elements in the copper. The other thing that we did was um, re-terminated, if you remember there was a, a fuse box in here, a real old crappy one, so we've taken the 6 mil armoured cable out of that and put it into the back, the armour gland into the back of this isolator there-ish. Um, and we've now got a 32 amp isolator. Uh, I've spurred a socket off that. I'm not sure whether I'm allowed to. We'll take it off if I'm not. 
And while I was messing about with the electrics, um, I uh, had a good route through the panel here and worked out what was actually connected and what wasn't. And most of them were labeled incorrectly, so, um, and quite a few disconnected. But we got plenty of ways free for the uh, armored cable on both sides of the unit, both the 6mm and the 16mm to be terminated into there. Might shuffle a few loads around to balance things up a bit. Um, it, we're all single phase really, apart from the electric door. So what I didn't say earlier is um, I borrowed some interesting technology from work um, and what we've got in here, I can't show you unfortunately, it's, it is confidential, but what we've got in here I don't think any other brewery in the world has got. So let me show you how it works. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? I've never seen anything like it. The question is, what's on the other side and should I go through it? So I think I'm going to have to. Let's go. Ow! Oh, where am I? That was a blast. Look what I nicked. Free beer always tastes the best. <laughs>